Okay. This is Mrs. Bear's class, um, ready to do our nonfiction um, features, text features. What are nonfiction text features? Yes, sir. Something that, like, features that are real. Features that are real. Hmm. Do you want to tell me more about that? Like, if, so, something that, like, if you put, like, something, like, something, right, real, um, if you did real, um, articles, Sure, you can pass. Yes, sir. Over here, behind me. Um, a nonfiction text feature is um, a characteristic or part of um, a, a writing about um, an informational topic. Like, um, if you were doing a topic on dolphins, a nonfiction text feature could be... Um, like a chart it could be like a bar graph <coughs> showing um, how many of different kinds of dolphins there are in the world. Okay, that's an example of a nonfiction text feature. And you also use the word characteristics as a synonym. We're going to use that in just a minute. Go ahead. Um, this is an example of not a um, nonfiction text feature. Um, it's a hoax, basically. Um, I was a real myth for few seconds. Yeah, a few seconds over there. So I was, I mean, new species. That is not a nonfiction um, text feature. Text feature. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, okay, it is also not a, a true statement. Nonfiction means that, it, that yeah. it's real. But text features can be in anything, but we're going to be focusing on nonfiction text features. And um, this friend over here used the word um, characteristic, and I said that was a synonym. It's not cinnamon. It's not cinnamon. Cinnamon. Not cinnamon, but cinnamon. Welcome to the and, Welcome to the and I'm going to ask. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask um, that friend in the corner there to come on up here. A lot of times we talk about characteristics or features or attributes in math class. So if I was going to describe a characteristic or a feature or an attribute of this person, I would might say he's male. I might say he has short hair. I might say that um, he has Velcro boots on. Anybody come up with another characteristic or attribute? Hi, buddy, Joe. You need to go? No. Okay. So long. Uh, if it's your turn, go. Oh, it is? Yes. He has a ski tag, so he must go skiing. Okay, so... Oh, he's so bored. Uh, yes. Um, he's white skin. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, he loves hockey. Okay, that is another character. Can you come sit up, stand next to him, please? What characteristic attribute or feature do they both have in common? He has a green shirt. Do they have that I mean, in common? <laughs> nope, in common. In common means they both have it. Yes? They're both boys. They're both boys. That's an attribute they share. A characteristic, a feature. <laughs> yes? They both have boots. They both have boots on. Exactly, yeah, so another one. You got one? Me? Yeah. Um, they both have... Ears? They both have ears. <laughs> a characteristic, a feature, an attribute are parts that help identify. They help categorize. They help organize the information. So we're going to talk about text features. Thank you. Right now, for sitting down. And I have this handy dandy book of text features that you will have available to use as a resource. In your final magazine project, you need to have identify at least 10 nonfiction text features. Excuse me, not appropriate. Ten nonfiction text features. At least ten. Can you have more? Yes. yes. Can you have less than ten? Not a... no. <clears throat> Question? Um, are, um, can we put something fictional somewhere in the magazine or does it all have to be nonfiction? What did the um, 
that's not our topic for today, but the short answer is yes. But if you read that front package, page on the packet, you will see the answer to that. Yes? I still don't really get what the nonfiction text feature is. I am so glad you asked that question. Let's see if going through the examples helps you. If it does, and we'll ask you that question again at the end. Okay? If you can hold on. So here's about 20 nonfiction text features. There are more. But this you can use as a reference. Title page, which tells you the name of the book or the magazine, the author, and who published it. Who's going to be the author in, the, in your cases? Me. Uh, who's yeah. going to be the publishers? Me. Yeah. And you can make up a publishing company if you want to. Yay. Table of contents. Who can tell me what that is? Is Adam Press. What page you would find things on? What page? What page you would find things on. And that's exactly important. In the last group, somebody said, oh, it's just a listing of what's in the book. But a table of contents has to also have... The page numbers. The page numbers, so you can find it. It's an organizational tool. <clears throat> an index. Where's this one located? In the back. In the back of the book. And it also has... <coughs> page numbers. Page numbers, exactly. It's another organizational... A glossary. Who remembers what a glossary is? A lot of these should be review for you from kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and <laughs> no matter what, and this year, no matter what school you went to. Yes. It's a it's sort of like a dictionary that explains words that are in the book. A sort of like a dictionary that explains words in the book. It usually does not have pronunciation in a glossary, which a dictionary does, but it could have that in there. How about a subtitle? Um, a subtitle is sort of like, um, it's, it's like, um, uh, uh, something that will explain what a small part of, uh, um, the writing will have. So, like, um, there would be, um, like, for this example, there could be a chapter, um, about, uh, dolphins, um, uh, behavior, and but then um, a subtitle would be um, something that would say that the section of the writing would be about um, dolphins' behavior while they're mating. Yes. So the t the title is the the big thing: dolphins, or Jackie Robinson, or um, <laughs> Olympic women Olympic sports. The subtitle might be for um, Jackie Robinson. Might be. Um, Negro baseball players or minority baseball players. The question. <coughs> I or a comment. question. So, if, did you say ten different? Um, yes, you can't have ten table of contents and count that as yes, or ten words in your glossary. No, you have to have the ten different ones. Heading. A heading is used at the um, a, is a title of a page or a section. So if um, the chapter was called How Dolphins Act. The heading would be Dolphin Movement. So in an article about Jackie Robinson, it might be um, his young life. It might be a heading. And just talk about his childhood. <coughs> then there's a subheading. So on dolphins, the subtitle is How Dolphins Act. The heading is Dolphin Movement. And the subheading would be underwater. What would be another subheading that would come after underwater? Use a prediction. Below the sea. Well, the, already underwater. So what would be a, a, the next one that would make sense? Above water. Above the water. Do, are dolphins ever above the water? Yes. Yeah, so there would be a kind of motion to describe with that. Yeah, when they jump. Keywords. You usually find um, keywords. They're important words about the topic that are either... Um, in color or boldface or italic, they're important words to the topic. And frequently, words that are keywords that are have their font changed are found in the glossary. In the glossary. And the index. Index. Good job, both of you. Yes, sir. I have a question about subheading. Okay. Um, can you have like a sub subheading at like a, like a subheading for a subheading? You can, but this magazine article that would be for like a, 
a 50-page paper. This is not a 50-page <coughs> research paper. This is much smaller and briefer. So it, it, then it would be too defined for that, be too narrow a focus. But it is possible to have that in nonfiction texts, to have a sub-subheading. Guide words. You usually only find guide words in encyclopedias, in dictionaries, in thesauruses, in reference books like that. But if you have um, that kind of a, uh, you might find it in your glossary. You might put in guide words on your glossary. And there the word at the top and the bottom. And the top word would be here. And the bottom word would be here. And they'd be alphabetized. So you would know that on this page you would find words between those two. Does that make sense? Okay. <coughs> Text box. That's a little box on the side with interesting or important facts or kind of tangential Kind of a little off topic, but not really off topic. Um, <coughs> that have to do with yours. Just a little interesting blurb on the side. Fun fact, interesting fact, a did you know. Timeline. Placing events that are on your topic in a timeline. This timeline is vertical. Sometimes a timeline is horizontal. Would a timeline ever be diagonal? Visually, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you needed to do it that way for space, you might. Illustrations and photographs. Now, if you're doing dolphins, are you going to have a picture of a dinosaur in your text? No. Yeah. Why not? It was about dolphin history. Because if, um, like, if some people think that dolphins are Or if you have a picture of that, what was that word? If they evolved. Yeah. If they evolved from dinosaurs, exactly. Would you have a picture of a, a fluffy pink unicorn dancing on a rainbow? rainbow? What about a fluffy pink dolphin would, dancing on a Would you? Rainbow? Would you? No. No. Would you have a fluffy pink dolphin floating on a cloud? No. No. Would that have anything to do with the factual information about? No. If we had dolphin, that's it. So it has to, the text, the illustrations have to match the text. What are captions? Yes, sir. Um, there are some parts that describe. Oh, no, wait. That's a different thing. Um, I was looking at labels. Um, okay. Captions yep. are above. Yeah, I gotta get it. Exactly. Yep. This is like a caption Discovering Desert. And so it's like a yeah, title, no, no. but like a. A title of what? A title of an article. No, that's not what a caption is. A title of a though, picture. of a picture, of an illustration. So the caption could be a phrase, like uh, our friend just pointed out, "discovering deserts," or it could be a sentence, or it could be a short paragraph describing what's happening in the illustration or picture. What's a label? It means like a picture or. It, it names the parts of a photograph. Do you want to add something? I have a question. Sure. Um, where are um, magazines? Are we going to be printing off pictures to put in it or drawing them? Both. Both? Yeah. Whichever works best. Like if, if you're doing dolphins, it's highly unlikely that you're going to have a picture that you took of dolphins, but you could draw one or you could find a, a real life one. Uh, one of our friends is going in April vacation to Gettysburg and is thinking of doing Gettysburg as her topic. So she could um, have a photograph that she took and insert that. I'm going to Disney World. Is that your topic? No. So we'll stay. Okay. Well, we're staying on topic here. There. So a label is identifying the identifying word in the parts of your illustration. What's a diagram? And you have all been doing diagrams since at least first grade. Even, well, I don't know about, I can say that about all of you who went to ACES since kindergarten. I think there's only a couple of you who haven't. What's a diagram you? Yes, from our dude. For me? Yes. What's a diagram? Okay, so if you have a picture, it's like describing like something in the picture. Mm -hmm. Like if like if it was like a dolphin, then it would be the fins like that. Mm. That would be a label. What's a diagram? Um, showing the parts of uh, 
like an animal or the solar system or the whole thing is a diagram the illustration and the labels <coughs> the labels are just the text the diagram is the whole thing yes. um a diagram is um, like a picture of um what the article or the magazine or the book or whatever is um talking about um with um labels um point with labels um and uh, um reference to um showing uh, what to um is on um what is on the animal or object or whatever um and where it is exactly okay uh, okay good a uh, map pretty easy to define you all know what maps are you did a big unit on maps in the fall Charts and graphs, you've done these in science and in math, a little bit in social studies maybe. Yep. These include line graphs, um, tally graphs, pie charts. What's a pictograph? That came up in our last class. Or a glyph. Is it, it's either they go up or down, or like up or side, like either go like up and they, no, no, no. Okay. You were trying. They have an up and a down and a side. What? Pictograph. Picto. Glyph. Do you hear any words in there that you know? Go ahead. Do you have an idea? I was going to say a graph with a picture on it. But... Yes! A graph with a picture on it. So instead of putting five, the number five for books, you would have a picture of a book and it might say that the book equals five books. So the number of books in a class that were read. And... Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. glyphs. G L Y P H S. It just means symbols. And um, if it's uh, and if um there and if it was saying like how many red books there were in a class and there were um uh fifteen and one and um uh one picture of a book equals ten books. Um you would you would draw books. half of one book. That's exactly how pictographs work. Yes, good example. So an icon is a small picture. That's, this uses the word signals, important information or action. I like to say symbols. What's the um, Firefox icon for the browser? It's a fox kind of going around the world. A fox going around the world, yeah. Um, and that means if you click on it, that icon up pops it. It's a symbol to say this is how you start something or this is important to pay well, attention to. Long so long. I, icons... Um, <laughs> are kind of eye-grabbing attention, draw your attention to it. So if you were going to have a text box on each page, a did you know or a fun fact, you might choose an icon to put in the corner to, to visually um, let people know that that was your fun fact. And another one is bullets. Can they, do they, and they just are um, an organized list. They're not real bullets. They're dots or stars or lines, lines little dashes. They could even be, if you were doing dolphins, you could even have little mini... Like a little dolphin? Mini dolphin there, too. Yep. So these are just some... These are the major text features. And so your non-fiction um, text feature assignment <coughs> lesson to get make sure that you understand text features. We're going to start today, and we might have time to finish it. I didn't have time to finish it with my class. I'm going to give you this paper that's on both sides, and it's a scavenger hunt. So scavenger hunts do you need to do in order. Do. do you need to do oh, them? No. Order? No, you can go in whatever order on this page. I will give you a magazine. Your first job on your magazine. So say I gave you this Kids National Geographic. There's no place for the name of the magazine, but I want you underneath the word scavenger hunt to write National Geographic Kids. You don't have to write up National Geographic. You could do N, uppercase N, uppercase G, and then kids. And then I want you to find the date, which is usually the year. And the month in the year that says October 2010, and put it there. Then fill out this scavenger hunt, the text features, the page number, what it is, and how does it help you. And if you need to look in here to remember what a glossary is or what a sub subheading is, you can come do that. Yes, ma'am? Do we get told the I would like you to try to do most of this by yourself this time. If we get really stuck... We'll talk about that. Yes, sir. Okay, I have two questions. Um, mm -hmm. One, 
what if the magazine you're looking at um, doesn't have um, one of the text features? So you're on a scavenger hunt, so if you don't have it, then you can't fill it in, okay? Okay, and my other question is, um, so um, one of them says, uh, what is it? One of the block, one of the roads of Questions, yep. Um, but if you, like, um, write down, if you find something and then you write down the page number and how does it help you on, like, title page, Mm -hmm. um, wouldn't somebody guess to do it that what you're writing about is the title page? This is so to make sure you understand what it is. So on title page, you might write page one, and you'll discover something interesting about title page and the magazines. So I'm not going to use that one. As, I'll use table of contents. So you might find it on page two or three. You usually find table of contents near the um, no, what, beginning. beginning. Yep. Well, also indexes are a thing. What is it? Um, it's a list of topics and page numbers. Why does it help you? Helps you find what you're looking for. What you're looking for. Okay. Does that help you, Atticus? Okay. Yes, sir. Um. Never mind. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you to pass these out one to a person. These are going to end up back in your packets. Um, if you didn't bring your packet today, you're responsible for making sure it goes in your packet. Um, once you get your paper, you can come see me and I will either have you choose a magazine or I will choose one for you. Yes, yes, this is a